What's going on fish keepers all over the world? Welcome back to your favorite Monday show. You're watching Fish for Thought and it's time for Fish Tank Review. We're getting pretty smooth with that intro. I certainly hope so. It's been like 250 of these. Whoa, this is what I've been waiting for. This was all about. Millie? Rapashi? They've left me out to dry. Your number one host, the only host of FTR. Fish tank decoration ideas with artificial grass <laughs> fish tank setup. Wait, that don't look half bad. That is like a turf field. Oh, don't know about that. Not sure. Does not look like a cave to me. Just looks like you rolled it up. Now it's too obvious. It was pretty good. You can, you could still do the Iwagumi with it, but now, I mean, because you can see the inside of that roll, you can now imagine what under all of that grass is. To the untrained eye, this could have been like dwarf hair grass. <laughs> Maybe some dwarf sash. My brother, you know the game The Forest? Maybe some of you don't, but for those of you who do, that just looks like a rabbit trap. Why? Nope. You've done too much. It was almost passable. And there is a part two though. See, the grass actually looks kind of neat when you fill it up. And wow, the satisfaction of not having to worry about disturbing any substrate, no dirt coming up. Ooh, that's, is it hot in here or is it just me? My centralized heating. Hey. All things considered, that's a pretty big tank and we've just got the guppies in there. So it's not like a crazy overstocked tank. There's no turtles, there's no ducklings. What kind of age of fish keeping are we coming to where it makes me genuinely impressed and ready to shed a tear when I don't see the tank being stocked with ducklings and red-eared sliders. It is but the end times. Now this tank might look a bit cursed, okay? But I truly believe this could be a viable solution. Am I tripping right now? Because I'm just imagining maybe a better hardscape than whatever the heck this guy decided to do. It was, the potential was so high. We were almost there. I don't know what came over this person to start making it look kinda, you know what I mean? Why is Wormchan from Attack on Titan up in here? For real, that carpet had so much potential. I kinda wanna see this uh, integrated into mainstream. If any pet store can do it first, it's PetSmart. They can, they can d adopt this idea. And I wanna try implementing it, see what happens. What is there to lose? Respect from all fish keepers around the world for using fake grass. Let me know in the comments below if you would do this. No judgment here because I told you I would. Hey guys, quick pause. Going for the fastest ad segment again on YouTube. Smash like now. Patreon. Let's get it on. Two dollars a month. Say trade bond. Thanks bro. Saw this in my new neighbor's house and now I'm terrified. Three things that would terrify me if I went to my neighbor's house and saw. The walls covered in blood. The walls covered in something else. And number three, whatever this is. Count them. Five kissing gouramis, iridescent sharks, albino iridescence. Ooh. How, what, is this hell? These fish, some of the most unlucky. It's like this person saw an FTR and decided not to turn up the volume. And I showcase one of these bad tanks talking smack about it, but they thought I was excited about it. Am I not allowed to give out sarcastic five out of fives anymore? We got a terrestrial plant. Looks like a nice bundle of pothos. And just zooming out to the most gorgeous discus tanks with the most gorgeous discus. Wow. And the roots of these plants, bet they're sucking up nitrates like no tomorrow. They're keeping the water parameters nice and clean as they should because discus are pretty notorious for wanting very pristine water parameters. I love the peace lily and now there's the pothos with the monstera finishing it out. The roots of the wood coming down. This just goes to show you don't even need live plants under the water for the fish tank to pop off man. And just easier maintenance overall to normalize terrestrial plants in the aquarium. Now this, what would you guess this would be? A microphone? Fish tanks mic'd up? Seems to be the new trend these days. What are your fish saying about you? This is a cooling fan. We've heard of heaters for the aquarium. I hope now there is the cooling fan. And look how beautiful this tank looks. A lot of plants do not do well under extreme heat. And this would be a godsend of a device for axolotl tanks out there. The tank almost looks better with this thing because people will be like, whoa, you're such a pro. I've never even seen that device before. What does it do? I love this idea. I've always been a fan of just a singular stump in an aquarium. It's just a snapshot of nature. It's so neat because the stump doesn't even go one inch above the waterline. It just disappears. It's really like they took just a portrait. It's an Instagram post within an Instagram post. Beautiful plants surrounding the stump, little details of Anubia's Nana, and the moss just finishes it off. The moss is giving maple tree because there's always moss growing on maple tree. What I would change about this scape in particular, because of the moss 
I want like a little fern poking out of it, you know? If you are an ecologist or something like that, you would know that these mosses love growing on maple trees that have licorice ferns shooting out of them. Chris Oak Woods sent in their four month old tank. They've got guppies, CPDs, and pygmy quarries, and a mono shirt. And oh boy, is this a looker. It's stocked perfectly, by the way. And it's very understocked as well. This is full on Wallstead method. You could take the filter out, nothing would change. There's so many nice plants in here. The Oko stone work is so great. I love the hardscape. Again, the plants, very impressive array. The detailing of the substrate, different sizes, the Yoko stone mossed up. This is truly beautiful and deserving of a 5 out of 5. Keep it up. Okay. That was almost too much internet for me. I, I, I was at the edge right there. Why did it have to come out of, out of the, these orifices? I have never had that happen. Not in my Christian Minecraft server. Let's continue on before I quit the internet for real today. One hour time lapse of my tank. It's a beautiful tank, extremely interesting because it proves a lot of different things. There's several species of fish in here, the glowfish and the betta fish. There is a betta fish in here if you look carefully, if you look long enough. This tank is pretty big. A lot of people say that betta fish especially do not actually need that much room. Their hypothesis is that you put a betta fish in a one gallon, it'll just stick to their territory. The same thing will happen if you put a fish in a 10 gallon, 20 gallon, 30 gallon, and up. This is extremely not the case. I've showcased it before in another FTR headliner, but this proves it a lot as well. This is a great example. The betta fish is perfectly using all corners of this tank, all the crevices. Sure, it might have some preferences, but it very clearly utilizes all the room it's given. And same goes for glowfish, same goes for the other live bearers, and the shrimp look super trippy. They look like little ants just crawling around everywhere. Kind of freaky, but my favorite part of all. That's right, none of those were my favorite part of this amazing time lapse. My favorite part of the Siamese algae eaters. These lazy mother effort. The whole time, basically the whole time, they're just in their chill spot. From the beginning of the video to the end, these chonkers have reached that age, like I said. Siamese algae eaters are like top 1% of all algae eaters out there until they reach like maturity, until they get start getting chunked. Stop telling Siamese algae eaters about 401ks, RRSPs, tax benefits. Don't let them unionize. Dan sent in their 120 gallon double dragon tank. Sounds like the sushi roll I had last night, double dragon. Kinda spicy, kinda just like kind of like tingly. Okay. It's been three years and the bio load is well balanced. It's rocking an FX6 fluval filter. And I think they're saying all this to <laughs> prepare me for what the hell is inside this tank. There's a side neck turtle. There's a red eared slider. There are tire eels. Uh, the next one will actually shock you. I don't know what in the world. There's an African bullfrog. Are those different from American bullfrogs? Because I could not, I would not be able to believe that there's an American bullfrog in there. There's banjo catfish. There's a sylphin pleco and there's butter Butterfly fish. Imagine your butterfly fish is the most normal thing you have in the tank. I love it. And it's a big tank, 125 gallons. Turtles, bio loads. I have a hard time believing the bio load is balanced in here, man. I'm just gonna leave it unrated, but you know, keep up the good work. Everyone looks pretty healthy. Mushroom coral attempts to eat my clownfish. NSFW Nemo spinoff? Wow. That's probably the anus and the mouth. This organism has no shame. When God made this organism, he really said, screw you. I can see the clownfish. Oh, there it goes. You get another chance at life. Daxon Lover 20 sent in their 53 gallon tank. They filled it up with 52 neons. I just want to know, do you count them every day? <laughs> Make sure they're still 52, because how does that happen? It's so specific. I would have just said 50. They got hillstream loaches, they got angelfish, and half beaks, which are very cool. For a 53 gallon, if you ask me, not overstock. 52 neons in a 53 gallon tank, forget about it. Not a problem. Dorsage carpet, some Maruma moss balls up in here. Elodia in the back, bunches of java fern. A solid five out of five. Keep up the great work, guys. You are killing it today. There's a crab in my tank, but I've never bought one. Okay, so this guy, another flexer. I, I still remember people like you, you know, the guy who found the hitchhiker that turned out to be a mantis shrimp. Those run for like thousands of dollars. I see y'all with your cool hitchhikers when I just get Malaysian trumpet snails for life. How are you out here getting a, a crab? Do be careful though, I saw in the comments below in this video, if it's not a pom-pom crab, you do wanna like, you know, maybe take them out because if you don't take them out, it'll take your fish out and not for dinner. If it's a pom-pom crab, apparently don't even worry about it. They're just a crab version of a shrimp. And thank you for being so lucky. <laughs> Why did I censor that? All I said was French you.
Frankenstein Labs sent in their 40 gallon axolotl. I've reviewed stuff from them before, but this was too good to pass up because this is my favorite thing. First of all, okay, before I get to my favorite thing, my second favorite thing is how this tank looks. It is huge. And the slabs, I feel like it's perfect for axolotl. They would just love to chill on it, even though at this point in time, the axolotl chooses not to be on the slab. But my favorite thing is that this axolotl, I've never seen this coloration, but this coloration kind of matches the slabs which is mind-blowing. Beautiful tank. As axolotl tanks go, it's a five out of five. Not an official scape score. Well, official axolotl scape score. This little friend marks the beginning of my catfish sleeve. I'm in love with his little eye and luscious barbel mustache. Whoever did this tattoo, they know fish or they studied it very nicely. Or I guess they're just a good artist that can replicate on the spot. That could also be it. What a beautiful rendition of a Corridor's catfish. This is the kind of sleeve I'm looking for. And yes, you get slapped if you lick your hoe, your real one. Happy Christmas. I agree, it's a little early, but I couldn't pass on this post. This is a crazy fish tank idea. They put a whole tree in there, okay? Which is five out of five amazing. There's like buse, accents of Anubius, detailing is crazy. And it doesn't stop where the water line ends. This tree extends all the way up and it's Christmas and they've, they've put Christmas lights on the tree. So good. Santa Claus better come to this house. Hey, welcome back to the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, pushing the algorithm. So glad you can make it and hopefully I made your money Monday go just a little better, get your week started just right. Before I let you guys go, here is this week's Katwa. What is a crazy fish tank idea or hack that you want to share? Put in the comments below, I'll see you guys there. It could be something interesting like putting a terrestrial plant in your aquarium to help with the nitrates. It could be maybe a paludarium hack, like what kind of terrestrial plants to grow in a paludarium, or maybe even how to feed your fish with free fish food that you make from the duckweed and algae you collect from your tank. If you enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin die, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rot. From Carisiformes to Parachirodon, hold on. There's not another fish that you can wish for. Live famsas, I finna one. I finna gone three days without fur. I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang so loyal, black tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence, gang.